There's an extremely strong argument to be made that 2022 is one of the best years for horror movies in cinema history. And fortunately for us fans, 2023 certainly doesn't seem to be slouching in that regard either. And that's because while the year's lineup is far from fully locked in, a bevy of highly promising, long-awaited horrors are already set to drop. And with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 horror movies in 2023 you need to know about. Number 10, Knock at the Cabin. M. Night Shyamalan is back with his latest enigmatic chiller, an adaptation of Paul G. Tremblay's acclaimed 2018 horror novel, The Cabin at the End of the World. The brilliantly mysterious trailer is already out and sets up this compelling premise. A couple, played by the great Jonathan Groff and Ben Aldridge, and their daughter head to a remote cabin for a holiday, only to receive a knock at the door from four strangers. The leader, Leonard, played by freaking Dave Batista, insists that the family must make a quote-unquote horrible decision, and if they don't, the world will end. Now, the trailer gives us no further context for this scenario, but certainly sets up an ominous, unsettling tone from the jump. And for as hit and miss as Shyamalan can definitely be as a filmmaker, this looks like his most self-contained stripped-down film in years, and in drawing from such quality source material, hopefully some of his greater excesses might be reined in a little. Either way, it looks gut-wrenchingly suspenseful and touts a genuinely killer cast. Knock at the Cabin releases on February 3rd. Number 9, The Pale Blue Eye. Christian Bale's unique brand of intensity makes him a perfect fit for the horror genre, and The Pale Blue Eye will see him reunite with regular collaborator, director Scott Cooper, for a gothic horror based on Louis Bernard's 2003 novel of the same name. Set in the 1830s, the story follows veteran detective Augustus Landau as he investigates a spate of murders at the United States Military Academy in West Point, New York. The kicker? Well, he's aided by a young military cadet by the name of Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, that Edgar Allan Poe. Cooper proved with his previous film Antlers that he has a unique eye for horror, and between the critically acclaimed source material and stupendous ensemble cast, which also includes Gillian Anderson, Charlotte Gainsbourg, Toby Jones, Simon McBurney, Timothy Spall, and Robert Duvall, it's easy to have high expectations for this one. Bale himself has consistently talked up the performance of his co-star Henry Melling in recent months while promoting Amsterdam, and so they should make for one of the most fascinating duos leading any horror movie next year. The Pale Blue Eye releases on Netflix on January 6th. Number 8, Infinity Pool. Brandon Cronenberg, son of David, returns next year with his third feature called Infinity Pool, which after the brilliance of his sophomore effort possessor, is sure to have all eyes on it. An original story by Cronenberg, the film follows a rich couple, played by Alexander Skarsgård and Mia Goth, on holiday in the fancy resort La Tolka, only for their relaxing time to be disrupted by a fatal accident. Details beyond that are being firmly kept under wraps, but given Cronenberg Cronenberg's prior work, it is reasonable to expect a twistedly creative horror romp here. And considering that the MPAA originally gave the film an NC-17 rating before it was re-edited to scrape an R, it's clearly going to offer up some gnarly sights that you won't soon forget. Mia Goth herself is certainly having quite the moment in the genre as well, and paired against an actor as talented as Skarsgård, the movie effortlessly hypes itself. With no known release date at the moment, Infinity Pool releases sometime next year. Number 7, Maxine. Mia Goth strikes again, this time with Maxine, the third and possibly final entry into Ty West's most unexpected X trilogy. West quite ingeniously shot X and its prequel Pearl back to back, and following the rapturous response to both films, has been given the green light to produce an X sequel reuniting audiences with sole survivor Maxine Mix, played again by Goth. Now, little concrete is known about this threequel, which recently started production in Los Angeles, but West has confirmed that it'll be set in 1985, five years after the events of X, and will follow Maxine's continued attempts to become a Hollywood superstar. Given the impressive consistency of the first two films in the surprise trilogy, there's no reason to doubt West pulling off this third go-round. For a franchise nobody knew anything about less than a year ago, it's kind of insane and impressive at the same time. Maxine releases sometime next year. Number 6, The Boogeyman. 
Stephen King adaptations have been enjoying something of a renaissance in recent years, especially on streaming, and next up is a film based on King's acclaimed 1973 short story, The Boogeyman. Rising director Rob Savage will tackle a project in which a teenage girl and her younger sister are haunted by a malevolent presence in their home following the death of their mother. It'll certainly be interesting to see Savage veer away from his computer screen horror filmmaking format for a more conventionally told horror offering. And given the love for King's story, it should make for an enticingly eerie romp. As for the supporting cast, it's blessed with the solid likes of Sophie Thatcher, David Dastmalchen, and Chris Messina. The Boogeyman releases on Hulu sometime next year. Number 5, VHS 85. The long dormant VHS anthology franchise came roaring back to form last year with the arguably series best VHS 94. And while this year's VHS 99 didn't quite reach the same heights, it did confirm that streaming, namely horror platform Shudder, was a perfect home for the IP. And shortly after VHS 99's release, the producers confirmed that the next film in the series was already in development. VHS 85 then will feature shorts from the most star-studded filmmaking roster yet. That being comprised of David Bruckner, who recently directed Hellraiser, Scott Derrickson, who has directed a bunch of films including this year's The Black Phone, Natasha Kamani, who directed Lucky, Mike P. Nelson, who helmed last year's Wrong Turn remake, and Gigi Sol Guerrero, who helmed Bingo Hell. Though not things yet known about the shorts or the cast members involved, the last two films offered up a diverse slate of stories with a strong ensemble of genre mainstays. So there's no reason to expect any different from VHS 85, which was shot back to back with the last film and is already well into post-production. If the producers can maintain a solid standard of quality, it would be great to see VHS remain an annual seasonal treat around Halloween. And with that in mind, VHS 85 is set to release on Shudder next October. Number 4, Night Bitch. Amy Adams probably isn't the first actress you'd associate with horror, but given the sublime opportunities the genre has afforded A-list performers in recent years, best of all being Toni Collette in Hereditary, it shouldn't be that surprising that Adams is currently shooting what's sure to be one of 2023's most provocative horrors. Night Bitch, adapted from Rachel Yoder's well-received 2021 novel, stars Adams as a stay-at-home mother who comes to believe that she's turning into a dog. Yep, that's the premise of this movie. With Marielle Heller serving as writer-director, it's easy to have sky-high expectations for this one. While Adams will star opposite Scoot McNary, who plays her distant, regularly on-the-road husband. Yoda's novel was lauded as a fiercely singular feminist fable and potent commentary on the terrors of contemporary motherhood. And if nothing else, it'll surely give us an Amy Adams performance like no other. Night Bitch releases on Hulu sometime next year. Number 3, Shelby Oaks. YouTuber Chris Struckman will make his long gestating directorial debut next year with Shelby Oaks, which, with almost $1.4 million in Kickstarter funding, became the most crowdfunded horror film project in the platform's history. The film itself follows a woman, Mia, as she searches for her missing sister Riley, and as her obsession grows, she comes to believe an imaginary demon from their childhood may in fact be real. For anyone who's been watching Struckman's YouTube channel over the years, it is fascinating to see his journey from critic to budding filmmaker and now the director of a low-budget horror movie. Shelby Oaks releases next July. Number 2, Megan. Perhaps no single horror film due for release next year looks quite as hilariously deranged as Megan. On the three gun as it's typed out. Co-written and co-produced by James Wan, this loony sci-fi horror outing sees a roboticist, Gemma, create an android companion for her orphan niece, Katie, which predictably turns murderously protective. The trailer certainly suggests that Megan isn't taking itself one iota too seriously, which given that it was written by malignant scribe Akella Cooper, shouldn't be that surprising. Considering that the killer doll genre has proven weirdly afraid to let its full freak flag fly in recent years, looking at you Annabelle and the boy, Megan appears to be refreshingly going for broke. There's no subtlety here, just a killer android slaughtering anyone who gets in the way of its friendship with a traumatized young girl. It's not gonna win any Oscars, but it sure looks like a hell of a fun, campy time. Megan releases on January 6th. Number 1, Renfield. 
Yet, for as daft as Megan looks, there's possibly one horror film releasing next year that might be able to rival it on the insanity front, and that's Renfield. This horror comedy from Chris McKay follows Count Dracula's lackey Renfield as he finds love in modern-day New Orleans. On one hand, Renfield is an original idea cooked up by The Walking Dead creator Robert Kirkman, and on the other, you've got Nick freaking Cage playing Dracula. Like, this sells itself, surely. Beyond Cage and Nicholas Holt, who stars as Renfield, the supporting cast also includes Aquafina and Ben Schwartz, ensuring this should be one of 2023's most hilariously unhinged horrors. Look, we already know that Nick Cage can deliver the vampiric goods. I mean, check out Vampire's Kiss for proof of that. But from the spy photos taken on the movie set showing Cage in a crushed velvet suit and deathly pale makeup, he's going to give us a rendition of the count that we'll likely never forget. So that's all this. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Which 2023 horror movies are you looking forward to? Let us know, and if you could, please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to What Culture Horror for lists like this on the regular. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.